In this demo, we are going to see the power of the standards for business automation in action. We are going to see how we can use standards like BPMN for process automation and combine it with DMN for describing the declarative business logic to be applied and the PMML standard for predictive machine learning models evaluation. The demo is about the use case for a credit card dispute. Specifically, we will see how we can combine the declarative business logic of the DMN standard with predictive machine learning models, making use of linear regression and random forest thanks to the support of the PMML standard in order to check if the credit card dispute is eligible for automated transaction. This is important as business automation can make a lot of sense, especially in economic terms for this business case. We will also see monitoring can be applied both to technical and functional metrics, for instance, for business KPIs. Let's see this running from the perspective of the user. As a user, I connect to my bank portal using my account. As I've connected to the bank portal using my account, I can verify my balance, my status, and I can check my transaction history. As I look through my transaction history, I notice something that is not correct. So I dispute this transaction. I follow the guided procedure to dispute this transaction. I believe I was charged an incorrect amount. As I follow the procedure to dispute the transaction, I receive back a case ID. We will check this reference later in the process variables. Let's see now what has been happening behind the scene. I'm connected to Business Central in order to highlight which is the process definitions and the DMN models definition file that are supporting the dispute case. I'm connected now to Business Central. I've opened now the case definition file. This is the case definition that is supporting that dispute process that we've been seeing from the user point of view. It has started with the user submitting the dispute case and then follows immediately a decision task that is going to delegate to a demand models in order to decide if to process the remainder of this transaction automatically or need some manual operation by some back office department of the bank. In the case of an automated processing, then we can see immediately that the sub part of this case handling will be very much simple and quick, while if it would have required some manual operation, it, the steps that needs to be followed, especially by some human operator, will require much more efforts. We are going to see now the specific process instance that I've triggered when I submitted the dispute case. This is the specific process instance. This is uh, correlated by the ID, and we get to see in the diagram highlight the part that we followed in the case handling. So this is the trigger that as we submitted the dispute case, the decision task, the DMN evaluation, have decided to process the transaction automatically. So it has followed the simple part of the subcase process. We can see some more details in the process variables. We can see here some more information about the specific case. We can see, for instance, uh, the customer status, in this case was platinum, the transaction amount, and we can see also some other indicators. We can see that the dispute risk evaluation has evaluated to a value of one, and the same was for the customer. So these are some values that are being evaluated by the DMN models. We're going to see that in a details in a moment. And finally, the full decision because of this uh, risk evaluation, the final decision by the DMN model was to process this transaction automatically. We are going to see now the DMN models that support the evaluation of this risk and the final decision if the transaction of the dispute is to be processed automatically or manually. In the project, I have here this one that contains the DMN models defining this policy. These DMN models describe the policy if 
the dispute transaction is to be processed automatically or manually. We can see it's composed of a main decision and two sub decision. One that is in charge of evaluating the dispute risk for the specific transaction and one that is in charge of evaluating the risk for the specific customer. Let's see more in details about the dispute risk evaluation. And we can see that uh, it is a decision tables and in the specific case, the rule that I've triggered is the um, rule number four because I'm a platinum status and I've disputed for a transaction that was less than $100. Therefore, the decision in this case was to evaluate the risk of this specific transaction as one. Similarly, it would happen for the customer risk evaluation. Let's go and see what is the final decision. The final decision takes the, the customer risk evaluation and the CV transaction risk evaluation. If the sum of those is less than five, then the decision will be to process the transaction automatically. We can see that this is consistent with the specific case process variable instances that we've just seen. We can do better than that. We can actually augment these DMN uh, decision models with actually data coming from prediction based on machine learnings because we are the bank. So we have historical data of our customer. We have historical data about the credit card transaction and previous dispute. So we can actually come up with machine learning predictive models that we can integrate into this DMN file in order to have a better assessment of the risk evaluation. We can see here that there are different PMML models. These are uh, machine learning predictive models for the dispute risk evaluation or the customer cardholder risk evaluation based on two variants. One is uh, based on linear regression, one is based on random forest. We can actually integrate these machine learning predictive models into the DMN. Let's see how to do that now. The first thing in order to use these machine learning predictive models is to include them in the DMN file. To include them, I use the include button. In this case, I want to use the dispute risk machine learning models based on linear regression. I give it a name. Once I've given it a name, it has been imported in the model and therefore I can make use of it. Let's see that now. In the models, I want to augment these decisions with the machine learning model. So to do so, I will include a business knowledge model node that is going to invoke the machine learning models for the specific case of this transaction. Normally here is by default is field. I can even have some job invocation. For this case, we are going to select PMML in order to select the machine learning models that we just imported. By clicking here, I can select the dispute ML. This is the name that I've imported that uh, PMML file. And once I've done that, the editor in the background, what we'll be doing is that it's going to introspect the PMML files in order to understand which is the model that has been imported, which are its name, input and output parameters. We can see that in action because as soon as I select the contained machine learning model's name, in this case, it's called linear regression. We can notice that the input parameters are automatically populated. Finally, what I need to do is that I need to drag the necessary requirement edges. And now it will be a matter of refactoring these decisions in order to make use of this BKM node that I've just modeled. In the interest of time, I've already prepared such DMN model. This model is using uh, the machine learning predictive models based on the historical data in order to better have an assessment of the dispute risk uh, transaction rating and the uh, customer risk evaluation. We can go now and change the process definitions in order to make use of this model. I'm navigating back to the project containing the case definition file. I 
I modify now the decision task in order to make use of the DMN models, the variant that is using the PMML files in order to make use of the machine learning predictive models. I've entered the name of the DMN model. I save this. I redeploy this project. Let's see this now in action. We are connecting again as a user to the bank portal. We can see our balance and we can check out transaction history. As before, some transaction does not correspond, so we're going to dispute it. I follow the guided procedure. I believe I was charged an incorrect amount. Finish the procedure and I received a new case ID. Let's go and now see in Business Central the specific case instance, how it has been evaluated and handled. In Business Central, I can go to Process Instances. I can open my specific instance. We can notice the transaction was still automatically processed. However, in the process variables, we can now see that the customer risk evaluation and the dispute risk evaluation has been given a different values. And that is because these are values that are not coming from a bespoke decision tables, but for the machine learning output for the prediction of both the dispute risk transaction and the cardholder risk rating. This is very important because we show now how we can integrate a DMN decision models with machine learning predictive models by PMML files in order to make a better assessment of the risk evaluation thanks to these machine learning models, but still using the DMN models in order to make a declarative decisions in order to enforce a policy of the bank if to process this dispute in an automated or manual transaction. Another aspect that is very important and needed from a business perspective is on a high level overview of all the process instances and different KPIs, also for comparing potential different machine learning models at runtime. The business might have several questions, such as how many of those dispute claims have been automatically processed if compared to the one that requires some manual transactions? How is the dispute risk being calculated throughout all the dispute case requests? how to A-B test and compare different machine learning predictive models and different demand models at runtime. To support this, we have an extensive technical logging thanks to Prometheus and Grafana, which can be used as well for KPI business metrics. We are going to see that in more details now. We can see in details about Prometheus, We can see this is the data that has been collected of the different dispute cases. This is a technical system, so we are not going to use Grafana in order to have some more business-friendly dashboard and have make more sense of this technical data being collected. I'm connected to Grafana. Here is a live dashboard of the matrix being collected by the running processes of the different dispute case being raised by several users. In the background, I'm sending data to the OpenShift deployments in order to stress test these different cases with several example data. In this case, we're collecting the metrics of using the demand models, which is used in decision tables in order to simply evaluate if the transaction is to be processed automatically or manually. We can see an overview of how many of those has been automatically processed if compared to manual, and we can see these graphs that are very interesting for the different several distributions. For instance, we can see that in the demand models, the dispute risk distribution is mainly hovering between one and two.
We can also perform A-B testing of the variants of the DMN models, one using the linear regression and one using the random forest. Moving to the data collected with the DMN using the machine learning linear regression models, we can see that the risk distribution has varied. For the dispute risk evaluation, the distribution now shows that this is being evaluated in the buckets that goes between 2 and 3. This means that actually we can compare in an A-B testing fashion the other variant of the DMN models, making use of the random forest machine learning predictive models. And we can see that now the distribution is more consistent with our original case. We can see in fact that the dispute risk now, the distribution is back again in the bucket that goes between one and two.